Okay, so here we are then with a basic flood flow project. I've done very little configuration, but I'll walk you through that in just a second. So just at the top here, what I've done is I've taken a sample JSON response and I just put this into a build chip workflow. And that's just going to simply return it back for me here. So it just makes it easy for me to, instead of invoking kind of paid for services or anything like that, I can just test my API calls out very, very easily using these two nodes here um, in build chip. But if I just move back up here and this is the response that I'm going to get back then from the API call. You can see here, this is a messages array. So I've got my first one here and then I've got my second one here. Okay, so we know we're going to get back a list of messages. So back in Flutterflow then, let's move down here to the left hand side to our API calls. You can see here I've created an API call called My API. It simply does a get and it's calling into that build chip fake API uh, URL, but there's nothing else set up in here at all. If I go to response and test and I simply test the API call, you'll see now that I get that kind of response back here. But if I move just down here, then you can see here that I've got my JSON pass that's now available to me. So of course, what it's done is here is Flutterflow's kind of kind of gone into the, the test response that's come back. And it's kind of like made some suggestions here about various kind of values that you may want to pull out. But the most important one is this one here. This top one here, you can see here is returning back our messages at the very, very top level. So what we're going to need to do with inside our list view is just iterate through each of the messages that come back. And then I can then, of course, bind those then to Flutterflow widgets. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but we'll just do this the simple way with inside Flutterflow, and that is add this as a JSON path. So just select that. You can see here at the top here, let's give this a name. So I'm just going to call this one messages, in fact, just like that. And you can see here that it's worked out that it's a list of a kind of JSON kind of response that comes back. And of course, I could just preview that and you can see I get the same preview as I did before. So that's pretty well much all that I need to do. So if I just add the call itself, um, that we know that's all updated. Let's head now back over to then the widget tree and let's just simply set up our list view. Okay, so now back in Flutterflow, let's now create an app state variable. We're going to need to store the values from our API call somewhere with inside our application. So I'm going to store these just simply in the in the page state. Um, so because this this page is going to specifically use it. So I'm just going to move up here then to state management, add a field, and I'm just going to call this one messages like that. It's going to be of type. If I just move down here, you've got one handy called JSON because that is the response we've got coming back. I'm just going to say it's a list like that because we know that it's a list of messages. I'm just going to hit confirm. Now, once we've got that, of course, then what we can now do is we can now open up the action flow editor. We can make that API call and then we can persist the values that's come back with inside that page state variable. And then, of course, we then would then use the list view to kind of hook on to that page state variable uh, kind of the data. And then we can then display the fields that we need to with inside our list view. OK, so let's now create the actions then to invoke our API. So I'm just going to hit the invoke button here. I'm going to open up the action flow editor. It's going to be an on tap. Let's add an action. So the first one I'm going to do is just then the API call itself. So let's just choose that one to say my API. Let's just give this a name as just API result. So we're going to assume here that obviously the API is going to always going to return a successful response. It's going to head in this particular direction. So what we now need to do is we now need to set that page state variable. So just choose add action. Just do a search here for update page state here. Set the fields. We're going to choose messages and we're going to set the update type. We're going to set the value itself. So we're always going to replace it with the value that we got coming back in this particular example. Now value to set, just select that. Now we're going to choose now then the action outputs here from the API result here. Just select that. Just select this now. It's going to be the JSON body. Now we need to do what we need to do here is we need to set the actual path itself. So I'm going to say JSON path. And of course, this is just going to be dot messages. This is our route into that response that comes back. So if I just hit confirm there, that is all that we need to do. Now, if I just close that, now that's one part of it. But of course, this list view is not going to display anything yet because we haven't actually set it up. So we need to now hook this up now to the page state data. So with the list view selected, move up here, move up to the generate children. Now every item in this list is going to be one of the messages. So I'm just going to call it message, go to the value here. And then we're going to go now to then our page state variable and it's going to be the messages here. So just list that there and just hit confirm. Just say save. 
We're now going to get that ghosted look here that we would normally get when we, in fact, I've got no widgets in there, so I need to put some widgets in there, but you'll see that they'll be ghosted here that will represent a particular uh, more than one uh, item. So we're going to just going to do a simple text widget here. You can see here's the ghosted look now. I'm going to go to and select the text selector. Now I'm going to choose the message item. And what I need to do now is I now, to, I now need to reference the JSON path into that particular kind of value that I need to pull out. So if I just move up here and go back to then the example, you can, okay, so you can see here then that um, I've got my messages and then here is the actual array. So we need to get inside this now. So I'm going to say, we're going to move down into content and now content is an array in its own right. So we need to pull the very, very first value out of our content. And then we're going to then go to the text and then we're going to go into the actual value as that. So it's content, text, and then value. So let's now go back now to Flutterflow here. So let's now go to the JSON path and we are going to say content, but that because we only want to return back the very first item out the array, we're just going to have the square brackets. We're going to say zero. We're going to close it and then we're going to then say text and then uh, dot of value like that. That's all that we need to do. So we're going to be able to pull that value out as a string and display it in here. Just hit confirm. So that should be all that we need to do. So we should just be able to now fire this up, invoke the API, and let's see what response we get. Okay, so here we are then in test mode, invoke the API, and that's making the call. There we go. Okay, all right. And double double press, and you can see here now that my page state variable um, contains two items, and you can see here that these two are now displayed. There's actually uh, kind of more than one line here, but um, this is the the two items that we've actually got. And you can see here, here's the API result. We've got status 200 back. So it's always worth using the de the debug panel to your advantage. So that is um, one way um, to. Uh, invoke APIs and use JSON paths to get to the data that you need from your API results. Now we're using a open AI response back here as part of like a chat GPT call um, where we're getting kind of the, the, the kind of the chat responses back. Um, but of course, different APIs will be more complex than others. So hopefully you found this little example useful.